Hey everybody, uh, welcome back to our daily devotional. I'm Jonathan Curry, the director of Next Steps, and I just want to take some time before we dive into our passage here in the book of Ephesians to really encourage you to not only spend some time daily with the Lord, whether it be through this video study or something in addition to that, because this is a great time. You know, we always talk about how busy we are and how many other things we have going on in our lives. This is an amazing moment where we can just plug into what God wants to share and what he wants to say to us. Uh, these are some times we've been given, some gifts we've been given. And while they're not all wonderful um, things that are happening in our lives, like many of us are missing work, some of us are missing paychecks, there's some real hurt going on in our community and in our lives. Um, but there are also some moments where we can just plug into God and say, look, I want to hear what you have to say to me next. Um, because I think that there is just some real genuine opportunity for us to hear from God like we've never heard from him before. And certainly a good opportunity for us to do that is during this time of study. So even though you're hurting, and many many of you are, I just want to encourage you to press into a God who has a plan, who has a purpose. He knows what's going on. It didn't take him by surprise. He's got it in control. And while we don't know all the details, we know that there's a God who loves and wants to take care of us and is taking care of us and is, is watching over us each and every moment. So I just want to encourage you with that as we jump into our study here. The book of Ephesians, Paul's writing the church of Ephesus. And yesterday we ended our discussion around verse 16. So I just want to pick up in verse 17. Paul says this, he gives some instructions for Christian living. He says, so I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from their life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Now, when I read that passage, I'm immediately drawn back to, in my mind, the Pharaoh whose heart was hardened before God, before Moses and the Israelites and leaving them and hardened his heart towards God himself. And I remember reading that story as a child thinking, how could, how could anyone possibly be hardened towards the things of God? And, and certainly as a younger man, I didn't quite understand or process what it was that sin really did to our hearts and did to our lives and what anger and frustration and unforgiveness really did to harden the heart of a person. And the truth of the matter is it does an amazing amount of destruction. It does an amazing amount of, of just leveling all the things that God intends to have in our lives. When we hold on to something, it hardens our hearts. And that's what Paul's starting to talk about. He's starting to talk about the Gentiles who have given themselves over to sin. They've given themselves over to a way that's against God uh, and against the, the things of what God's trying to establish. And so he's calling for unity previously in the chapters with those that want to follow after God, follow after Christ. And he's also saying, look, don't live like you used to live. Something new is happening in your life. There's a change that's taking place. Then picking up in verse 19, it says, Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity, and they are full of greed. That, however, is not the way of life you've learned. When you heard about Christ, you were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is Jesus. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self which is being corrupted by its, uh, by its sinful desires, to be made new in an attitude of your minds and to put on the new self created to be like God in the true righteousness and holiness. And I want to stop with our discussion as far as the verses are today, and I just want to focus in on this one idea that Paul leaves us with. And that is this idea that we're to put on a new self. Somebody and something new is supposed to be happening in our lives. And during this time uh, that we're in seclusion, I think of it a little bit like a butterfly. And we often talk about the beauty and the wonder, the promise of a butterfly. And spring has come and, and butterflies come out of their cocoons and they have this amazing new life. And that's really a lot, what a lot of pastors and preachers will use this verse and they'll talk about that verse in that context and that light. But what I've learned recently about butterflies is that the, the process inside the cocoon is destructive. In fact, the bug itself almost completely liquefies and then is reformed and made new. During this season where it feels like some of us are in a cocoon, whether it's through this quarantine or maybe there's other things happening in your life where the quarantine isn't bad, but man, there are some other things going on in your life and you just feel stuck. You feel surrounded. You feel as if you're in a cocoon and you can't break free. Know that God is perhaps in some ways changing you into something and the process is painful. The process is difficult. And that doesn't sound like a wonderfully encouraging word 
for, for our devotional today, our way to get started with our morning, but I promise you this, the encouragement is in that the butterfly doesn't stay in the cocoon forever. The butterfly, the, the worm emerges and turns into a butterfly after a season has passed. You can do this. You can go through whatever it is that you're going through because it is for a season. And it's up to us to put on our new selves and to become like that new butterfly each and every day. It's not going to be the easiest thing that we do. It's not going to be the easiest process that we endure. But God's in it and requires and calls us to, to mature and to grow and to become like that butterfly, putting on a new self. For some of us, that means a daily decision to say, you know what, today I'm going to follow God even closer than I did yesterday. And for all of us, it requires us to continually press in towards a level of maturity and growth, speaking the truth in love, embracing the love and seeing uh, the world from God's perspective. And that requires us to, to grow and to mature and, and to do all these things we've talked about over the last couple of days. And I just pray that that God continues to encourage you in this time, that he continues to show you his love, that he continues to show you his mercy, and continues to show you new and better ways to grow in him, to put on the maturity that he's called us to, to allow us to cast off our former selves and walk into this newness of life that he's called us to. Let's close our time together with just a short word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, in Jesus' name, we thank you for listening and being in the midst of our spaces and our rooms and Lord, hearing us even during these times. Lord, some of uh, the members that are watching this uh, particular video are going through a season where not just because of what's happening in the world around them, but because of what's happening in their lives, they feel like everything is breaking down around them. But Lord, we thank you for the promise of your word that we can put on a new self, that you've created us to be new creatures in you, that you've given us the strength to become new believers and new creatures and, and ones who act differently. So Lord, let us embrace and hold on to that truth and that strength each and every day. Lord, let us begin in our hearts and our lives today. Lord, thank you for doing that in us. Thank you for loving and taking care of us. We praise you for all that you're doing in our lives. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. All right, well, have a wonderful Friday. We'll be off tomorrow as far as our daily devotionals are concerned, but we still want to encourage you to dive deeply into God's word. We'll come back on Sunday with services, both for our children's ministry and for our adults. We'll have great worship online. We hope that you'll spend some time joining us live when those are broadcast on Sunday morning. Uh, and then we'll be picking our study back up on Monday. We'll be wrapping up our study next week. And we have so many amazing things. We're praying for you guys. We're always here for you. If there's anything that we can do for you, click on the link above in this, in this uh, post. And we certainly will receive your requests and we will be able to pray for you. We'll be able to reach out to you, uh, even dropping you a, a line, or a call or a text. Any way that you want to reach out to us, just let us know and we will try our best to reach back out to you. We're praying for you and we can't wait to see you again soon. Till then, be blessed.